And to populate this app, like I said before, we can either drag and drop a part from search, or we can drag and, drag and drop it from this pin search. So we can add, add objects here. Let me see, as I drop it in there, my tree gets populated, and then my 3D will get populated. While we wait for that to load, we're going to go and search some, some more objects. So we'll see, if I search blue car, I can go and grab it directly from this non-persistent search. And you see, once I drag, that search goes away. And we see the object is loaded up. And the convenient thing about the product structure explorer is it essentially allows you to get a high level just view of your part or your assembly and also allows you to see it within the context of other assemblies so we have the, both this part and the car loaded up at the same time in this environment and we can go and simultaneously look at our tree and our parts in real time and also with cross highlighting capability so <clears throat> I can click either in my tree and we see it cross highlight in our 3D or I can click in our 3D and we see it cross highlight in our tree. This helps, helps us navigate on specific data. So if I wanted to get to this rim, I can say focus on and it zooms directly into the rim and then it also expands down to that level in our tree. And what's more using our context menu, which is the menu that pops up if you click anything or it's basically a menu that uh, offers you options based on the context of what you're selecting. So since I'm selecting this object in this app, it's saying that maybe I want to use level selector. And what this is, is basically a ladder tool that as you go up the rungs of the ladder, it highlights the next parent subassembly until you get to the root. So this allows you just to select up your tree. Some other tools that are available to you in product structure explore we'll start in your tree menu you basically have your view tools that allow you to manipulate how you're viewing your tree and then your selection tools here and then we'll review the tools of both of these together but first we'll take a look at the view tools in product in the in the 3d window of our product explore and we here we see our typical view tools you have your fit all in you can change between parallel and perspective views and then you have your typical pan rotate and zoom and if you're familiar with Katia V5 and the mouse manipulator commands where you use the center button to pan and zoom in and out and rotate, that is also still available in this interface. And you do get your options to switch between your different uh, material or visualizations. Then of course you got your access to your main views, your primary views. You can go and toggle any wireframes that might be in the model by toggling hide show lines, points, or reference axes. And then you could also toggle your hide show view, which let's imagine if we went and took this front wheel assembly and hit it in our 3D. We can remove that from our view or isolate it because if we switch to our no show view, this swaps our visible space and allows us to see everything that we hid. So now we can either look at this alone or we can go back to our tree using cross highlight and our level selector to select the entire level of front wheel assembly and then toggle the hide show then now we have it back available to us so I wanted to look at the tools together because they're essentially the same between them going from left to right we have our properties which allows us to view the metadata on our parts, so who made it, when it was made, when it was modified, etc. You could view related objects, so you can view if there are links between objects, also parent-child relationships, and then also uh, any extra documentation such as reviews, markups, engineering documents. So that gets into that interconnectivity that I was talking about. Since all of your data is interconnected, you need an efficient way to find what's connected to what. So you can look on your tree, and choose a specific object and choose related objects and it'll bring up a window that'll bring up all the parents and children and anything associated with that model. So if I go and hit the rim assembly and hit explore related objects, we get a new window with the 3D shape at the, uh, the lower geometry level of the 19 inch rim and then the parent being the sub assembly. And double clicking on that we can see 
children of that cell assembly. You can essentially just go up the tree until you get to your root object. And then from here, you can choose to multi-select or just single select and then probe data in specific ways. So you can say open with, you know, and it gives you some options for some apps you can open it with. And once again, same as the other widgets, we have the ability to pin this to our dashboard. If we did so choose to. Then a final note on uh, some widgets and being able to move them around. If you noticed during this entire presentation, I've been moving these widgets around and resizing them pretty, pretty at will. Uh, and that is specific to the design. They want to make it so you can customize this dashboard and make it your own. So I can look at multiple widgets at once, or I can choose to maximize it and have a single widget take over the entire screen. We can also apply filters to our assemblies based on specific criteria, such as selection, volume, uh, and attributes. Uh, in our 3D, we can measure the model. Obviously, we can't measure in our tree. There's nothing to measure. And then also available to us in our 3D is a section. Then this is your option to just toggle the uh, section plane. And then you can choose to print your data. So you can export over here in your tree. You can export your tree to a CSV file. Or you can print a screen grab of, let's say, maybe you cut a section and then grab a measurement. And then when you say print, you get a pop-up window that allows you to save to a specific format, either as PDF or send it to an actual physical printer.